Okay, here I am once again overdressed. Gotta look professional. Uh, <laughs> I've written part 39, and this time I added a decimal. No idea why. Picking, over, picking up where we left off. The last couple of... Uh, the last two parts, I think, have really been something. This might be where it's... I, and I, I marked it. When I do the summary, I'll come back to that. So far, I've enjoyed... I've really enjoyed this. Nothing I disagree with. <clears throat> to live the Sermon on the Mount. To live the Sermon on the Mount means hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy. It means swallowing our pride and making ourselves of no reputation. It means being able to follow the Lord wherever he leads us. It means submission to the Lord. It means taking on the enemy, but it also means great joy and satisfaction. Satan does not normally attack unless he is cornered. He is like a snake. Snakes run away from you. I've been all over the jungle, and I know from years of experience that most snakes will always run away from you. The only time they will attack is if they are cornered. One time I was standing on the trail of one... I'm sorry. One, one time I was standing on the tail of one <clears throat> and didn't know it, but was still trying to get away from me and never turned around to bite me. When you start living the way that God wants you to live and start becoming what God wants you to be, you have cornered the devil and he will have to turn around and attack or else you will cause him serious damage. The Lord will give you a battle plan. He can give you his supernatural joy so that when your reputation is being devastated and you are being persecuted, when lies and evil things are being said against you, you know what has happened. You know you have Satan in a corner and you are ready to smash his head and there will be a tremendous victory where lots of people will be set free and won to Christ. If you keep pressing, you have to make a choice to either defend your reputation or keep doing whatever God told you to do. Do not let up on the devil once you have him on the run. Rejoice in the Lord, the Apostle James says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. We do not have to defend ourselves. God can defend us. There may be times when we have to clear something up, but we do not have to make our defense an obsession. We do not have to try to corner someone and say, so-and-so is going to come and say such-and-such, such, but I want you to know in advance it isn't so. <clears throat> we don't have to do that. All we have to do is go forward in victory and receive the orders of the Lord. At the darkest moment, when it looks like Satan has us, and he is laughing in our ear and telling us that with all the things we have tried to do for the Lord, they are not going to work, work out because he has tripped us up somewhere. Don't buy it, because a tremendous victory is right around the corner. If we will continue to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus, listen to him, and do whatever he wants us to do, in that hour of emergency. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask for your victory. We ask, Lord Jesus, that we would be able to follow in your footsteps and make ourselves of no reputation. That we would be willing to call Satan's bluff every time he threatens us, every time he tries to expose us or make us lose our standing before men. Lord, we want the only thing of importance to us to be what you think of us. Who are we in your sight? We want to delight in pleasing you, and as we please you, we want to be filled with your joy to overflowing, so that no attack of the enemy can ever take it away from us. So that when faced with a genuine attack of the enemy involving slander and lies, we can rejoice knowing we have him cornered and that we are being faithful to you and that this is causing the enemy to become uncomfortable. So we can rejoice in you and go forward knowing the victory is very near. 
I pray, Lord, that many would implement the Sermon on the Mount in their lives and put it into practice in order to have their household based on the solid rock that cannot be shaken no matter what Satan does. That they would be able to claim their family, children, and loved ones for you and know that Satan is not going to be able to take them away. I thank you that we do not have to have large numbers to win the victory over the enemy, but I know that we do have to be pure before you. I pray that we would hunger and thirst for righteousness, for purity, for you, and not seek after power, that we might humble ourselves and allow you to lift us up. Amen. I'm going to leave that right now, and we're going to go to a new chapter. Let me God bless.